All right, guys, back with another sermon. The name of this message is going to be called Gateway Drug. Gateway Drug. Uh, this should be a pretty quick sermon, uh, but also uh, the title of it may be uh, a little deceptive uh, because we've heard that expression gateway drug before. And usually when people talk about what they call a gateway drug, it just means that this is one drug that when people get hooked on it, they start doing other drugs. It just opens the door up to more hardcore drugs. But actually, this sermon really is not about drugs or drug usage. It's actually a play on words, kind of like the titles of many of my sermons are. It's not really drugs as in, you know, substances that we abuse. It's drugs as in like the past tense of the word drag, if you will. You know, like when there's something heavy and, and you can't really pick it up, but you want to move it. So you just, you, you grab a hold of it and you just pull really hard and you drag it. And you may say, well, you know, I drug that across the floor. That's the kind of drag or drug that I'm talking about in this sermon, a gateway drug. And you might be thinking, what? That doesn't make any sense. It will. It will. Um when I get further into the sermon, but let me just say that this does have to do, of course, with gateways, but not the kind of gateway that you think. It's not about, you know, the gate to a city or a gate or a fence to somebody's yard. It has to do with uh, these gateways, the gateways in your head, your eyes, your ears, your mouth, the openings of your head that are gateways or entrances to your inner man, your spirit man, your soul, your inner being. That's what we want to look at today. We want to look into the gateways, if you will, the entrances to what's really going on inside of us that we can't see with the natural eye. And basically, this sermon is really just to say we have to be careful what we allow into or out of our gateways because certain things we let in can be a hindrance to our uh, spiritual growth to our our soul it could be damaging to us in this in that sort of way but also we have to be careful what comes out as well and, and by that I mean what comes out of our mouth which is a very uh, very fatal <laughs> Uh, gateway, if you want to put it that way, because we know there's life and death in the tongue. Uh, I think I might have touched a little bit on that last week. You know, I did mention a certain scripture where it's, it's Jesus talking about how it's not the food that we put into our mouths, but it's what we say, what comes out of our mouths that really defiles us. So, but but I kind of want to hit on that uh, in this sermon and. Uh, scripture wise I'm going to be in Luke chapter 11 and Mark chapter 6 if you're following along in scripture so as you're turning there I want to share uh, this little story real quick of what happened so uh, last week I believe this happened sometime last week I was at work and you know I've been working at this at this prison for a while now being a correctional officer and um, uh, I was talking to one of the inmates and then uh, me and another co-worker and some inmates, we were kind of talking about some, some different things. And, and one of the inmates was, was asking uh, what my favorite body part is on a woman. And uh, I, I thought about it for just a second, and I knew the answer right away. I said, you know, I think the most important part would be the eyes. And, then, and they were like, why? You know, he, he wanted to know why. And... Uh, I was talking to him about eyes and I said, you know, when it comes to people in general, I pay attention to the eyes because sometimes I said, this isn't all the time. This is not an all the time thing. This isn't with every person that I meet, but every now and then I may come across somebody who, when I look them in the eyes, as we're talking, sometimes I might get a really eerie feeling inside of me that, that just says something just isn't right with this person something some, some, something just something just doesn't sit right with me with this person and it's not like a personal thing you know I don't treat them bad or treat them different from others I still show them respect I'm decent to them and this that and the other but I just try to I just try to 
be care careful around them. You know, I try to watch myself around them. And, you know, if I don't necessarily have to be around them a lot, I might try to find ways to avoid them, not to be mean. But, but I just really feel sometimes, like when I look into a person's eyes when they're talking to me, every now and then, not a whole lot, but every now and then I may come across somebody that when they're talking to me and I, and I just look them in the eyes, it's like there's, it's just like I see something. And it's just like this real eerie, uncomfortable feeling that I get that something, it's like something in me, something, something in my spirit is just like, nope, no, <laughs> nope, in all capital letters, nope, you know, <laughs> emphasis on that P, nope, not, not good. Uh, and, and, and I'll even say, you know, I, I've said, you know, it's, it's not even like, they have ugly eyes or, you know what I mean? It's nothing like that. It has nothing to do with, you know, if they have attractive eyes, it's just there's something there that I sense just by looking in a person's eyes every now and then. I just come across somebody that I'm just like, I just, I just, some, something just doesn't feel right. Just something just does not sit right. And uh, he said, you know, he said, I have those same experiences too. He said, but for me, it's not the eyes. He said, it's the smile. He said, I can be talking to somebody and when they, you know, when, when we're conversating, if they smile at me, sometimes I can look at their smile. And he was like, it's like, it's like I can sense evil in them if they're a real evil person. It's like the, the, the mouth, the, that, that smile, even though they're smiling, it's like I still sense evil even though they're smiling. It's like I see it in their smile if something just ain't right with them. So he was like, I understand where you're coming from. For me, it's the smile. I was like, okay, I, I get where you're coming from. And I thought about it, and I was like, you know, it makes sense. What we're both saying makes sense because of gateways. And then I started talking to him about what I'm talking to you guys right now about, about the, the, the gateways, the eyes, the mouth, which is, you know, part of your smile. I said, you know, the, the eyes, the mouth, the ears. I was like, you know, these are, these are gateways. And I told him, I said, I said, there's an old saying and I believe it. And it's the saying that the eyes are the gateway to the soul. And I said, I think that's why sometimes if I look into somebody's eyes, sometimes I might get a vibe from them. And I said, you know, so what you're saying makes sense because the mouth, you know, the smile, the mouth, that's another, that's another way, I guess, of, of experiencing, if you will, what's going on with the inside of somebody that you can't see. It's like you, you, you read them without them really realizing it. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's your way, your gift of being able to, to pick up something, I guess. Uh, I guess spiritually speaking, but anyway, we were we were talking about that, and it was funny because that night I had read some scriptures. I was in the book of Luke. I was just reading, 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 and I had gotten all the way through verse or not verse through chapter ten, and I had quit. But then that next night, the next night after I had this conversation with this particular inmate, the next night I had picked my, you know, picked the Bible back up, was reading, picked up where I left off, which was chapter 11 of Luke. And I came across this right here, what I'm about to read to you. And it tripped me out because I was like, dude, I was just talking with somebody last night about this. You know, I almost read it last night, actually. You know, that, that night prior, actually, I had almost read it. But uh, it says this, Luke chapter 11, verse 33, it says, No man, when he hath lighted a candle, putteth it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a candlestick, that they which come in may see the light. And of course, this is our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ speaking. So of course, he's being deep. You know, he always has his parables. He's always got his, you know, his examples uh, using one thing to explain something else, uh, using something simple that we understand to show us something deep, something of the spirit realm or something of, of you know, the, the, the kingdom of heaven or something like that. So verse 34, it says this, the light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, the whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. 
Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light as when the light, or sorry, as when the bright shining of a candle doth give the light. So when I read that, it just tripped me out. I was like, I was just having this conversation <laughs> with somebody the other night about this. Like, it was, it was awesome. So then, uh, last time I was at work, I, I had wrote the scriptures down, these scriptures here in Luke. And I, I had showed it to him. I was like, hey, look, we were just talking about this. And I read this. You got to read it. And, you know, he read it. And he was like, so you were on to something. I was like, yeah, we were both on to something, you know. But anyway. <laughs> but anyway. So, uh, but yeah, but go ahead and turn to Mark. Like I said, I wanted to keep this a quick sermon. I'll, I'll read something to you here in Mark, and, and I'll wrap this up, Mark chapter 6. But uh, yeah, you know, listen, just to give some examples, you got to watch the gateways. For example, um, the eyes, you know, why do we want to, as Christians, why do we have moments where you know we're we we've been born again right we're living for christ we see changes within ourselves where certain things that used to be fun or certain things that used to kind of entertain us it's like they don't entertain us anymore we see a growth we see a maturity but sometimes we get around certain people and and it's like we try to fit in maybe we give into peer pressure or we're just trying to fit in or belong or just trying to be able to be a part of a conversation or whatever and and so a lot of times what we do is it's like we force or drag something into our gateways right because if like i said if something's heavy we can't just pick it up and move it so we may have to force it or drag it or like a child when they have a temper tantrum you try to take them somewhere grab them by the hand take them somewhere they fall all out on the floor so <laughs> so i've seen some parents they just grab a hold of their their <laughs> their shirt no, they look. They grab a hold of the hem of the child's garment. Not as <laughs> I'm just playing, like like you know the story of Jesus, the woman grabbing a hold of the hem of his garment. But anyway, now they 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 grab a hold of the 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 child's shirt or the end of their shorts, and they'll pull and they'll just start dragging them. Like, okay, well since you don't want to give up, you don't want to get up. I'm gonna drag your little self to the <laughs> to this kitchen, you know, or wherever. Or you know, in the cartoons, you know, they may have to drag something or somebody somewhere because they're they're stiff as a board they fell out so now you got to drag them that's a way of forcing pushing something or dragging or pulling something and so that's what i'm saying sometimes when we just put up with stuff and we allow certain things to play out and allow certain things into our gateways that we may have control over we just allow it we tolerate it we are forcing it into ourselves or dragging it, pulling it in, dragging it inward. Get it? Gateway drug. We've drug all these things into our gateways and it can become a hindrance to our growth. For example, uh, pornography. That's not something that we should be trying to force feed into our eyes if we're around people and all they're doing is 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 false witnessing bearing false witness against other people saying they they saw them do this and saw them do that and they were there and witnessed this and that and you know they weren't or you know what i mean or they're 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 putting someone down and, and slandering somebody who you know is innocent they're just tearing down their name out of jealousy you know you shouldn't look at that as an opportunity to link up with them and tear somebody down just to have an alliance or just to make yourself feel better when you know it's not right when you know you feel convicted so you shouldn't drag all that slander and all that naysay and all that false witnessing into you lest it affects you and then you become that same way even when they're not around a slanderer someone who who is always trying to drag somebody else's name through the mud to try to brighten your little light right but that's not how it's supposed to go okay 
your light is supposed to shine anyway as a Christian, right? We, we sing these songs all the time. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Right? We sing all this stuff, right? We're going to just let it shine for Jesus. In the name of Jesus, right? We say all this stuff. But for some reason, there are some of us that we feel like we can't shine on our own unless we're putting everybody else's light out. Right? Unless we can find some kind of way to blow out somebody else's candle, so to speak. We don't think we can be bright enough on our own. Failing to remember that it's not a competition in the first place. But whatever. What do I know, right? So, so anyway, let your light shine like this bright orange hat I got on and this bright shirt. Anyway, so keep these things in mind but also the mouth the mouth the mouth the mouth that's such a key thing oh my gosh <laughs> again with this it's kind of different from the eyes and the ears and the nose it's not so much about what we let in but more so what comes out but let me say this even though it's not about the food we put in listen it can be about the words we put in or force in or let others force in because the words that we let others force in will have to come out. The words we force in are just as bad as when we let them out. You might be thinking, well, what do you mean? What, what do you mean? Well, sometimes we allow people to influence us and we take on their words we take on what they say even when we know it's not right so that's what I really want to put an emphasis on it's not letting people put their words in your mouth it's one thing to let what they say in and then you really do let what others pe what other people say become your words but it's, it's a whole other thing when you allow someone to force their words into your mouth so to speak and use you like a puppet letting people speak through you so Matthew or sorry Mark chapter 6 starting at verse 17 let's look at this it says for Herod himself has sent forth and laid hold upon John and bound him in prison for Herodias' sake his brother Philip's wife for he had married her for John had said unto Herod it is not lawful for thee to have thy brother's wife therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him and would have killed him but she could not for Herod feared John knowing that he was a just man and a holy and observed him and when he heard him he did many things and heard him gladly so we we've got Herod the Tetrarch here and he's he's got his power he's got his title his position he's got his influence he has married Herodias which is uh, the, the wife of his brother and John who we know was one who spoke the truth told Herod it's not right that you have married this woman it's not right that you have married your brother's wife and Herod didn't like the fact that someone stood up to him and told him the truth but he tolerated it to an extent and what I mean is he had him put in prison but he did not kill him because he feared how the people would react because a lot of times when someone has power and influence they have to remember that it's, it's, it's these people that allow them to have this power right they have power and influence over the people but they know if they do or say the wrong thing that could offend folks and get folks upset then those people may not be as easily influenced by him or her because of the fact that they're offended 
In other words, they get offended and decide, well, we're not going to really show support to this person anymore. So now I'm not really trying to hear what they have to say. And then when they're not listening to the one in power, the person in power loses a little bit of that power and influence because they don't have the ears and the eyes of the people. They don't have the attention, the focus, the gateways of the people anymore. So he doesn't want to lose the gateways of influences. So he he doesn't want to upset the people too much. So he doesn't actually kill John. He doesn't hurt John, but he does lock him up. But if flat out says that Herod dies, would have him killed. But Herod isn't going to allow it because of his fear of the people. So that's what's going on here. Verse 21, it says, And when a convenient day was come, that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief estates of Galilee. And when the daughter of the said Herodias came in and danced and pleased Herod and them that sat with him, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatsoever thou wilt, and I will give it thee. So Herod has this uh, this birthday celebration. He's gathered all his people around. They're having a good time. And Herod invites the daughter of Herodias to come in and dance before them. She dances. She does a good job. She gets a lot of compliments. And Herod says, listen, ask for whatever you want. And I'm going to give it to you because you've done such a great job. Verse 23. And he swear unto her. Uh oh. And he swear unto her. Whatsoever thou shalt ask of me, I will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom. He says, I swear to you whatever you want. Just name it. I'll give it. That's where he really messed up. It was one thing to say, what do you want? And then she could have said something. And then he could have been like, well, maybe not that. But think of something else. But no. He, <laughs> he had to say, I swear. That's where he messed up. Right there. We have to be careful with this swearing thing that we like to do. Making these unnecessary oaths uh, 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 about certain things ahead of time not knowing what we're getting ourselves into saying i swear i'll do something but you haven't even been told what they want from you yet that's you know that's that's not good we but but we have these habits of doing things all the time i remember growing up i'd hear other kids and teenagers say like they'd be talking to somebody and somebody they would say something to somebody and that person wouldn't believe them so to try to make that person believe them they would say man man i'm not lying to you man i i swear man man i put that on everything man i put that on my mama man i put that on my child i put that on my unborn child i'm like what <laughs> I put that on my grandmama grave. That right there was one of the most popular ones. I put that on my grandmama's grave. How are you going? Seriously, you're going to put something on somebody that's not even alive? I mean, I get it in a way that can be kind of clever because, I mean, they're dead, so it can't really affect the person if they're dead. So it's kind of a clever thing to say, but it's really low at the same time. Like, really, you're going to... Man, I swear it. I put that on my grandmama's grave. Like, are you serious? <laughs> but I, I would hear people just say this stuff all the time. Man, I put this on blah, 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 blah. I mean, they would just swear on any and everything and everybody. I put that on everything I love. I put that on everybody I love. I'm like, seriously? Like, I mean, even if you are telling the truth, do you really want to swear on everything and everybody all the time? Like, man, I hope you ain't swearing on my life. What the heck is going on around here? But anyway, but, <laughs> but it was crazy just hearing like other kids and teenagers say like, really, you, you, you know, you're swearing on your mom, you're swearing on this and that, like for real? Like, I don't know, man, it just tripped me out. I was just like, is this really happening? But, but we, we, we make these oaths and we swear all these things. Oh, man, I put that on everything. Like, 
Ugh. And then people will tell me, like, if I if I say something and, and if somebody doesn't believe me, man, man, put that on something, put that on something. And I'm like, no, nah. <laughs> I'm not doing it. Man, you you lying then. Okay, either you believe me or you don't. But I'm not, <laughs> I'm not fixing this to start swearing on stuff like that's weird like i'm not i'm not doing that i'm sorry i'm just not gonna do that <laughs> but anyway that that just always tripped me out but anyway let me keep going let me get this wrapped up but he said i swear unto her i swear he swore unto her whatsoever thou ask of me i will give it thee unto the half of my kingdom we got to be careful with what we say verse 24 and she went forth and said unto her mother what shall I ask? Uh oh. She loves her mom. She's influenced by her, her mother, which makes sense. So, what she does is she goes and instead of thinking of what she wants for putting on such a great dance, she goes and asks the mother, Herodias, what she wants. And let's see what she says. And she said, The head of John the Baptist. So she wanted her husband to behead John. He didn't want to do it because he's scared to, in, to, to lose the influence of the gateways of the people, right? But then he, he swears to the daughter of Herodias that she can have whatever she wants. So Herodias goes to the one that she's influenced by, which is her mother. Her mother influences her gateways, right? She looks up to her mother, so she listens to her mother. She sees what her mother does, right? She smells what her mother cooks. She, 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 she sp probably says some things that her mother says, right? Her gateways are influenced. Her ears, her eyes, her nose, her mouth, they're influenced by her mother. So she cares enough of what her mother thinks or says that when she gets the opportunity to get whatever she wants from the king, instead of thinking about what she really wants, she goes to the one she's influenced by the most, which is her mother. And her mother says, aha, this is my opportunity to get what I wanted in the first place. He didn't listen to me when he said I wanted the head of John. Well, guess what? I'm going to have my daughter ask for it because he swore unto her that he would give her what she wanted. He didn't swear nothing to me, but he swore it to her. So I'm going to uh, use my influence that I have over her gateways. I'm going to drag my influence into her gateways. I am the gateway drug. Get it? And I'm going to have her get what I want. Verse 25, and she came in straightway with haste unto the king and asked, saying, I will that thou give me by and by in a charger the head of John the Baptist. So sure enough, she requests for herself what her mother actually wants. See, this is why we have to be careful of who influences us in our gateways. Why? Because you have somebody getting their request through you. You will have moments in your life where you will use your gift. She had a great gift of dance. Come on. You have a moment where you listen. Kind of like when we say your gift will make room for you. She, oh my goodness. She had a moment. She had an opportunity. She used her gift of dance. And she had the, the, the influence for a moment of the king. His gateways, his eyes, his ears, everything was focused on her. And, and, and she had favor with him. And he said, I'm going to give you whatever you want, I swear. And instead of taking that opportunity, come on, to get what she desired, to get the desire of her heart, she had to go and see what somebody else had to say. She had to go and see what somebody else wanted, to see what somebody else would have thought would have been a good idea. But the person she went to didn't care about her and what would have been good for her. She cared about what would have been good for her own personal self. The mother wasn't messed up about what was best for the daughter, even though the daughter was the one that won the opportunity using her gift. The mother was selfish and took advantage. See where I'm going with this?
gateways, guys. The influence of the gateways. Don't get into a, a, a situation where your gifts, your talents make room for you and all of a sudden you have the attention and the favor and the gateways of important people, powerful people, people of influence focused on you. And instead of taking that opportunity to, to request something great, and rightfully so, because the moment is yours, don't let it just slip by because you got to go and see what somebody else wants who isn't even concerned about what's best for you, but they're only concerned about their own evil, selfish ways. And they take over your opportunity to get some mess started, come on, where you don't get any gain. All right, let's, 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 you can't, you see what I'm saying? What I, what I was saying earlier about uh, somebody else putting their words in your mouth. That's what I'm saying. The mother put her own words into the mouth of her daughter to get what she wanted, but it ruined an opportunity. Yes, yeah, she can go back and say, well, you know, I made my mom proud because, you know, I got what she wanted for her. And, and that may be cool for her at the moment because she's a child and she doesn't know any better. But there are some of you listening who know better. You're not the, 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 the naive child anymore. You're not a gullible child. You know better. And so the child may eventually, as time goes by, look back and say, Wow, I screwed up a big moment right there. For somebody who wasn't even thinking about me at the moment, but thinking about her own selfish vendettas, her own selfish agendas, her own selfish motives. She got the desires of her heart, which were, were very negative, very grotesque. She was not the purest of heart. But the daughter, the little girl, if she had taken the time of thinking about what it was that she herself actually really wanted, she may have wanted something beautiful, something innocent, something pure. Whoever, I, I wasn't even planning on saying this, getting ready for this sermon, but I really feel like I need to say this now. I don't know who may need this, but listen to me, because I really feel like I should say this, seriously. Seriously. If an opportunity comes to you <laughs> and, and, and you find yourself in a situation like this little girl where God allows you to be in this, 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 this moment where you have that favor, where, where, where the, the desires of your heart can be granted to you, don't give it to somebody else who could care less about what's good for you. Or what's good for anybody. Don't hand it over to someone who's not thinking of anything good at all. But who is evil. Evil hearted. Full of evil intentions. Think about that. It don't matter how much you love them. Don't matter how much they say they love you. Don't do it. Because in the, in the long run, you might be able to say, oh, well, you know, I made them so proud. They're so proud of me. But then later you'll look back and be like, wow, <laughs> I really did that. I really gave that up for, okay. And they probably would not have done the same thing for you if they were in your shoes and they were the ones that had that opportunity. They wouldn't have handed it over to you. Or they, they would have came to you and planted some nonsense into you right let's 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 move on let's move on so she she goes to the king she says the head of john the baptist verse 26 and the king was exceeding sorry he was not happy about this it says yet for his oath's sake because he made that oath he swore it he said he'd do whatever the little girl wanted for his oath's sake and for their sakes which sat with him he would not reject her. 
So he's feeling some type of way about this. But he know he made that promise. He swore it. He made that oath. He doesn't want to seem like a man that, that is not a man of his oath. Who's not a man of his word. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison. And brought his head in a charger and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. The mother got what she wanted. But let me ask you, what do you think the girl would have wanted if she really had just taken the time and just sat and thought about it? What do you think she would have wanted other than the head of John the Baptist, other than the head of somebody she ain't even thinking about? He didn't say nothing to offend the little girl. He got the, 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 the king is mad because he got told the truth. The wife is mad because because. She was butthurt too, but she wanted him to be taken out. But now she's kind of butthurt at the husband, the king, because he doesn't want to kill him, kill John, because he's worried about what everybody's going to think and say. So they, they got their own issues. They got their own reasons of why they're offended about this, that, and the other. It didn't say nothing about this little girl being mad about any of this. She's not messed up about this. She's a kid. Her motives are probably a little bit more pure than her parents. That's something to think about. I really feel like I needed to leave y'all with, with that question, with that thought. What would she have wanted if she had really and I'm not, again, not putting her down. She was just a child. She was being a child. A child that loved her mother. A child that was influenced. Her gateways had been influenced by her mother. She didn't know any better. Right? But what if? I mean, she wasn't being selfish like her mother was because she gave up what she could have got to see what her mother wanted. Even if it was something creepy like the head of somebody on a silver platter. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just something to think about. So with that said, I just wanted to leave y'all with that and also say, y'all hear me out. The gateways, the gateways, the gateways. How are you allowing these things to be influenced by those around you? Do you let other people put their words in your mouth? And then when it's all said and done, the, the rewards you get end up going to the person who put their words in your mouth. And then you have to realize you've been the puppet this whole time. You could have got what you wanted if you weren't so messed up about pleasing everybody else. Sometimes people will act like they mean well for you. Sometimes they really don't. And sometimes it's not that they don't mean well for you. They're just looking out for their own agendas, their own. You get what I'm saying? They may love you, but their but their personal agendas may overshadow how much they might actually care about you. So their own evilness is bigger than their love for you. And that's them. That's their heart issue. But it can't be your heart issue too. Forgive. Let go. And maybe for some of you, maybe you've already had a moment like that. Maybe you've already had a moment where you were in an opportunity for something awesome and then maybe you let somebody talk you out of it. But maybe the reason why you're hearing this message is because maybe, maybe God is going to give you another chance 
to get what it is that you really wanted in the first place because you've learned your lesson. Maybe you had to learn it more than once, but now that you got it, you're like, okay, <laughs> not this time, not, not this time, not this time, not this time. I got to go for the gold this time. And maybe the reason why, maybe the reason why you're getting another chance from the Lord is not only because he is a God, uh, a God of second and third and fourth chances, not only will he restore unto you the years that the canker worms and the pommel worms and the locusts ate up, maybe it's because you were so pure of heart and because you were trying to do right by somebody else. You may have given up that opportunity for somebody else and, and, and maybe maybe you had such good intentions when you did that and the other person that, that benefited from it, they didn't. They didn't have the best intentions, but because you did and because you are, are not hateful and spiteful towards that person or anyone else, maybe you just feel bad at yourself. Maybe you're hard on yourself about it. But because your heart was in the right place, maybe this is why you are going to be given another opportunity for something better. Another chance for something better. Because now you get that you cannot let your gateways be influenced, not just by people that you know don't mean you will, but maybe, maybe by those who you really thought they had their best intentions from you. And now you're seeing sometimes even those that, that should love you and should have the best intentions, sometimes, sometimes even they don't. You meant well. You meant well. Even if they didn't, you meant well. So here's your chance to get it right. Here's your chance to get it right. You know, this is a humbling moment for me, honestly, because to an extent, some of this, some of this is hitting home for me as well. Because some of the stuff I'm saying right now, I really wasn't even planning on talk, talking up, talking about and hitting on when I first started recording this sermon. So I know the Lord is speaking. You know, oftentimes before I record a sermon, I'll say, Lord, you know, speak through me but speak to me as well and and sometimes that that definitely happens that definitely happens sometimes i'm not just saying something to y'all sometimes i might say one or two things in a sermon that it, it hits me like a ton of bricks i might not show it but i'll just be i'll be talking but i'll be thinking to myself that right there that little nugget right there that one was mine <laughs> so uh, so yeah and, of course, this sermon ended up being, like, almost already 15 minutes longer than what I thought it would be. But, anyway, that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up. So, um, I hope you got what you needed out of this. Thank you for tuning in and listening. I'll pray us out of here. Heavenly Father, I thank you for another time to minister another word. Lord, uh, I pray that this would definitely be a time of second chances for your people. Um, a time for opportunities. Sometimes we, we, we screw up certain things because maybe, maybe we were a little naive or maybe we just needed more maturity or more growth or maybe it was just because, you know, we didn't really see the, the truest intentions of those around us because we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. And sometimes we do that from the purest place of our hearts, even when those around us may not be so pure. And so, Lord, I just wanted to say, Lord, I pray that you would uh, just just show grace and mercy to your people. You know, you give us new mercy every day. You're a God that's full of grace. And, of course, grace and favor are just synonymous with each other. So I just pray that, that you would just show your grace and your mercy and your favor upon your people give people opportunities for the things that they really desire the desires of their heart lord and just bless bless your people 
for, for just wanting to be pure hearted and wanting to be good to others and do right by others even when they miss out on certain things by trying to do right to others Lord really bless these types of people that, that try and strive to be so pure in heart Lord bless these people give these people chances give these people the right opportunities Lord help them see where they messed up but Lord help them get it right this next time around Lord and Lord I just thank you I thank you for all of your grace I thank you for all of your mercy your favor I thank you for your loving kindness and your steadfastness Lord I thank you for all the wonderful attributes that makes you you Lord I worship you and I praise you not just because of the things that you can do and the things that you can give but Lord I thank you I love you I praise you and I worship you because of who you are you are an awesome God and I appreciate that Lord Lord I give you all the praise the glory and the honor in Jesus name I pray amen